Hi, and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman, and today I'm going to be presenting week number 30 of my 52 week series of Scrappy Blocks, and it is also my week one of my mystery quilt for spring of 2023. Can't wait to show you this. Many of you have already registered for my mystery quilt class and you've gotten the email with the PDF of information. There was um, an introduction email as well as the part number one, which is block A, which we're going to be learning today. And all of this can be found on my website. You can get the PDFs, the videos, everything will be on that blog. And I'm going to have a link here in the description box below so you can go there and find everything that you need. If you're missing a PDF, no worries, it's out there and you'll be able to grab that. And today I do have part A, uh, which would be week number 30 of my Scrappy Block series or part one of my mystery quilt class that is attached so let's check it out i want to share with you the block the quilt itself i have named stars in my eyes and this is the first block that we're going to be learning today this is sarah's choice or sarah's star and I, this one was done in scraps this one is done in yardage i like to do my mystery quilts in both ways because that way if you don't already have your scrap stash ready to go to use in scrappy quilts Maybe you're, you only have yardage. Well, I'm going to show you both ways that you can do this. All of my patterns, um, my scrappy patterns, my regular patterns, they all offer the yardage just as any normal pattern would, but it also shows you how to cut that yardage into the scraps that you need to use my speedy solutions. So it's a great option. You can use either option depending on what you have available. So the first thing that I want to do today is just share with you how I pulled scraps from my bins to use for the scrappy blocks. I'm also going to show you what I pulled for my yardage. And I'm just going to give you some options and give you some ideas so that you can be thinking about what you're going to be using. Maybe you've already made a decision, maybe you haven't. Uh, this is the week to do that. Next week on Monday, we'll be learning block B or block 31 of my scrappy series. So um, hang on, there's much to learn and we have so many fun things in store. All right, let's take a look here at the PDF. First of all, at the top of the PDF, you're gonna see that there's the fabrics required for the quilt, and it lets you know there are uh, three yards of light that are required, a yard and a quarter of medium fabrics, and two yards of dark, and then it gives you the backing and binding, etc. So that's what you need for yardage and for the total amount of fabrics. Now, um, for the Speedy Solutions, um, squares themselves, this is what you're going to cut or need for the blocks. So you're going to need to make nine and for this block you're going to want to pull a total of, of the lights. You're going to want to pull 36 three and, a, three and a half inch squares. You're going to want to pull 36 four inch squares which will be used for the half square triangles. And of the medium and the dark you're going to be pulling 36 of each of those are the four inch squares to make the half square triangles. So that's what you're gonna need for the nine uh, block A's. And here's what I have pulled uh, from my scrappy stash. So I have four of the three and a half inch squares for one block. You'll, you're gonna make nine of these, so you're gonna need 36. I have four four inch darks for one block. I have four four inch mediums for one block and I have four four inch lights. Now this is all for one block. I need to take this times nine, so I need 36 of all of these from my stash. And what you can do is simply, <clears throat> if you organize your scraps so that um, you've got your lights and your mediums and your darks in your containers, that really helps you. Then you can just go in and grab a stack. Here's a bunch of mediums. And these are actually half square triangles that I threw in there, so I'll pull those out of the way, but you can go in and grab a stack of lights and just put them in a container and take them with you to your sewing machine. Here are some previously finished um, quarter square triangles, which I'm going to leave in here because at some point I'll use them, but I can grab a stack of 36 of the dark. So everything that I, well actually these are my three and a half inch squares. And what we're going to need from here is just the lights the light three and a half inch squares from my four inch bin is where I'm going to grab my 36 four inch lights, my 36 four inch mediums, and my 36 four inch darks. It's kind of messy. It's not completely organized in here. 
I'm always in and out of my bins and they become a mess. But it's nice if you keep things organized, then you can just grab a stack of each of these, take it to your sewing machine and start putting your blocks together. All right, so that was the scrappy block that I put together and I'm going to take you through this step by step on how to, how to make this block. But, and I want you to notice on the scrappy blocks, I mean, I have everything. I have children's prints. I have, I guess, I don't see batiks in here, but I do have some batiks here, some grunge fabrics, lots of different prints. Um, there's just anything and everything. It is a scrappy quilt, and I am, my goal is to use as much of my scraps as possible. And so these are the, uh, right in here are the darks that I had used to make half square triangles. These are the mediums right in here. And this medium is, it has the appearance of more of a light medium because of all the white. So if you don't care for that, you could certainly have swapped that out for a, a more obvious medium. I'm not worried about it. These are lights, light, lights. And this one is really light here because it's got that white background and these are all considered lights. So it's gonna be very scrappy. I'm excited to see what it's going to turn out like, but this, the goal is to use your scraps and I am using all kinds of scraps. I'm often asked, how do you know what to put together? And I am just using scraps. I do have some muddies and I do have some clears in here and I have another video on that. I will uh, link that here uh, also, but some of these, uh, this is more of a muddy look, if you will. It has more of a brown undertone. This has more of a clear and I don't get hung up on that. There are some who prefer to keep all their muddy scraps together and all their clear scraps together and make quilts that are either muddy or clear. Muddy being, they have more of a gold or brownish undertone. Clear meaning they're, they're bright and crisp colors. Um, so that's totally up to you, your preference. You do what you choose to do, but in my case, I have combined the two, as you can see. I want it just to be as scrappy as possible. I like that look. So it's totally what you prefer. It's your quilt, your block. Now, I want to share with you um, this particular one. This one is made with just three fabrics. So I first of all went to my batiks and I grabbed this beautiful batik here and I decided to use that light as my um, focused fabric, if you will. And so I went back and I pulled some other fabrics that went with this beautiful blue and this beautiful green. So those are the three. It's a, a dark, a medium, and a light. Very simple. Um, we all have yardage in our stashes and I'm sure this is something that you can easily pull. Just find a light, which often people think of it as the background fabric, but not necessarily. Sometimes you might want your background fabric to be dark or medium and then have your star, maybe a light and a dark, etc. Just whatever you choose to do. This is your quilt. Have fun with it. But uh, this is what I have done and I've pulled four of the light three and a half inch squares for one block, four of the four inch darks, four of the four inch mediums, and four of the four inch lights. And these will be my half square triangles. And this is for one block. I need to take this times nine because I'll be making nine of these blocks. So I'll need 36 of each of these. So um, because it's yardage, then I just cut this yardage or these squares from my yardage. So again, if you look at your PDF and be sure to, it's uh, linked below, be sure to save it, download it, print it, uh, whatever, or else go out to my website and grab it if you uh, don't get that done. But we're going to be making a total of 12 half square triangles for the block. And we're going to be making a total of four that are light and medium, four that are light and dark, and four that are medium and dark. And I'm going to take you to the machine here in a second and show you how that's done. This is how we're going to do that to make those 12 half square triangle units that go in there. And then the corners are the three and a half inch squares in there in the light. So let me take you to the sewing machine, show you how this is done. And before I forget to show you this, I'd mentioned that I just grab a container and I put all of my squares in there. That's what I have done. I've gone um, for the yardage. I literally had to cut all of this. And so I have everything that I'm going to need for these nine blocks in here. And I went to my Speedy Solution scrap stash and I pulled everything that I'm going to need uh, for my nine blocks right here. My light three and a half inch squares, my dark, medium and light 
four inch squares for the half square triangles. Everything I need is right here and I take it to my sewing machine and I like to lay out block by block. So here we have what I need. I'm going to pull my um, three and a half inch squares and just put them aside. We don't need them right now. The first thing we're going to do is put together our half square triangles. And here's what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to lay a couple of medium half square triangles down here and I'm going to take two of my light half, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to take uh, two of my four inch squares and I'm going to take two of my light four inch squares and I'm going to lay them right sides together and you've seen me do this technique many many times. Now I'm going to lay two of my four inch darks. I'm going to place two of the four inch lights on top of that right sides together. And there we go. And then what I have left are two four inch darks and two four inch mediums. And I'm going to place these right sides together. And they're not exactly right, but I'll, I'll even them up as I take them into the machine. Now what I'm going to do, and you've seen this many times, I am going to draw a line, one diagonal line, from corner to corner. And I'm just using a pencil here and drawing a faint line, corner to corner. And then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine, and I am going to stitch on both sides of that line. I do all of this assembly line fashion. It just makes it go much faster. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these lines and then I'm going to take it up to the sewing machine and stitch on both sides, a scant quarter of an inch down both sides of that uh, scant line, or that drawn line. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, and just to review what I've pulled for one block, I am working on one block. I have four four inch lights I have four four inch mediums and I have four four inch darks. And those will create a total of 12 half square triangles when I'm done here. So let's take a look at how this is sewn together. As I mentioned, I've already drawn my line, just one diagonal line from corner to corner. I'm gonna bring it up to my machine and I am going to sew a scant quarter inch uh, seam allowance on both sides of this line. When I trim apart my um, half square triangle units, I do like to cut from stitching line to stitching line as I go through and cut these apart. That just helps to get rid of an excess dog ear that we're going to have when we stitch it together. So that is how I cut them apart. It's something that you might want to try. Just helps to get rid of a little excess fabric there, a little dog ear that would um, happen across that half square triangle. So there we go. Once I've got them all cut apart, then I'm going to cut them on the drawn line. So I'm locating the drawn line of each of these, cutting across. You can certainly use your um, rotary cutter and mat for this too, but here I have a medium dark right here. There I have another two. So each of these squares produced two half square triangles. So I have two medium darks here. And this one looks like it's a light dark. Let me cut this apart and I'll show you. Once I have all of these cut apart, I'm going to uh, get them uh, squared up to the correct size. So here is a dark light half square triangle unit. Every single one of these must be squared up to three and a half inches so that it fits in the block properly. You can't just press this open and then expect it to work in your block. You really truly do need to square each of these up. Use your favorite square up ruler. You can simply just use a square omnigrid ruler. 
uh, to square them up as long as it has the 45 degree line on it. And I'll take this up to the tabletop here and show you that. So as you see here, I have all of my half square triangle units cut on the diagonal line. Now I'm going to square them up. I'm going to show you that you can use just a regular OmniGrid ruler or any ruler that you might have. As long as it has the 45 degree angle there, you need that line to line up on the seam allowance. I'm also going to show you my preferred method of squaring up half square triangles, and that's using my clearly perfect slotted trimmer, and trimmer A is the half inch size. And so we're going to be lining them up on the three and a half inch size here. You may have another uh, type of square up ruler that's your preferred method. Doesn't matter what you use, just get them all squared up to three and a half inches. Let me grab my rotary cutter. So when you um, use a ruler, a square ruler like this, to square up your half square triangles, you do need to press them open. So I have pressed to the dark. Some people like to press their seam allowances open. You're certainly welcome to do that. That does give you a much flatter half square triangle. Um, that's absolutely something that you can try. I would make sure that my stitching line was a smaller stitch length, maybe a two or 2.2, uh, just to ensure that nothing pops away if you do that. But whichever, a method you prefer, but I'm going to go ahead now and just show you how I'm going to square this up to three and a half inches. So here is my OmniGrid ruler. I'm going to um, line up this diagonal line here on the seam allowance, and then I'm going to find, actually I'm on the wrong side here, there we go. I'm going to find the half inch mark. There isn't much that has to come away as I square this up, but it is important that it does get squared away so that each and every half square triangle is exactly three and a half inches. There's more on this side, I can see. All right, so I've lined up my line on the seam allowance. Here's three and a half, here's three and a half. These two sides I know are perfectly straight because I've just cut them. So now I just need to cut these two here. So there wasn't a whole lot that had to come away, but it's important that it does come away. I can also cut that little dog ear there. So each and every one of these needs to be squared up to three and a half inches. So if you're using a flat ruler like this, that's the technique that you'll use. If, however, you're using a different type of um, square up ruler, I think I'll leave it on the dark so you can see this better. I am using, again, the Clearly Perfect Slotted Trimmer trimmer A. I am going to line up this stitching line right here. There's a three and a half inch stitching line there. I'm going to line up that stitching line on the stitching line of this triangle here. I am not pressing the triangle open. I'm going to simply line this up on that stitching line and then I'm going to trim away the excess fabric. There we go. So that has come away. Now the neat thing about the clearly perfect slotted trimmer is there are these little um, areas here where you can come in with your um, rotary cutter and trim away these dog ears as well. Unfortunately, this particular rotary blade is it's too fat, so it won't fit in there. But I have other rotary blades that will fit in there, so I, I will change when I do the squaring up and make sure that I can literally slip my a rotary cutter in there and square that up and that eliminates some excess just the excess dog ears that you don't need all of that would be trimmed away and here we have the three and a half inch um, half square triangle it needs to be pressed afterwards so with the uh, this type of a square up ruler I'm pressing after I square it up and with a square square up ruler you're pressing before so here are my 12 half square triangles that I'm going to need for one block. These are the medium darks. So here's the dark and the medium, dark and the medium. Here are the medium lights. I have the mediums and the lights here. And here I have the light darks. So these are the darks and these are the lights. So I've got four of each and I'm ready to lay out my block and get it sewn together. So use your PDF and lay out the parts and pieces of your block so that they form the star, making sure that 
within each row all of the parts are oriented in the correct direction. And on your PDF it shows you row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Just make sure that as you're uh, laying them out that you're following the proper orientation for each square. So here it is. So I have my mediums creating this star point. My darks are creating that star point. Mediums, darks, mediums, darks, mediums, darks. And all the way around the outside edge, it's light. And these are the four three and a half inch squares that are out in the corner. And as you know, I like to lay out my blocks next to my sewing machine and I like to web the block together as I sew it. So that's what I'm going to do. And by that, I simply mean I'm going to take uh, the first square in row two lay it on top of the first square in row one, bring it up to my machine and start sewing. And then I'm just gonna keep gathering those and adding them in. Then I'm gonna lay it down, grab the third uh, row here, the first square in the third row and add it to that unit and continue on down and doing this. And that threads or webs every aspect of this block together. And then I can do, I can sew the actual rows together. So let me do that for you. I'll do that in fast motion. You've seen this many times, but let me do it in fast motion for you. So now I have it webbed um, together row by row here. Now I'm going to web the columns together and I'm just going to simply flip them together. And I do like to pin and just make sure that everything lays properly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you the end result. So here are a couple of my scrappy blocks. They do need to be squared up to 12 and a half inches. So each of the blocks that we'll be making needs to be squared up to 12 and a half inches. This mystery quilt, I will let you know, is going to be going on point. So next week, um, we're going to be learning a new block and we'll be creating four of those blocks next week, as well as cutting our setting squares. So that's what we'll be doing next week. And uh, you'll want to have a light background that's uh, large enough for that. And you'll get the PDF with that information this coming weekend so that you're ready for next Monday's class. But these are the wonderful uh, Sarah's stars for my stars in my eye block or quilt that we're doing for the mystery quilt class. And if you're using yardage, your uh, block might look something similar to this with just the three different fabrics in it. So I'm so excited that you've joined me. I can't wait to see what some of the quilts look like when they're finished. Every spring and fall, I like to do a free mystery quilt class. It's usually three to four weeks long. It's always on Monday evenings and it's via Zoom. And you can certainly register for that going out to my shop and doing so. But um, it's also something that you'll just find on my YouTube channel. Plus, I always have links to my website. So all of the PDFs, all of the videos, they're all going to be available to you on my website. And they'll continue to remain available to you. So I hope many of you will make the beautiful Stars in My Eye quilt. And I can't wait to have it finished so that you can see what it looks like. Um, enjoy making these scrappy blocks. Here is a nice scrappy block. Here is a great 
block using yardage. So whichever way you plan to work on the Stars on My Eye quilt, it'll work beautifully. The purpose of my having these free mystery quilt classes every spring and every fall is to teach you how to use your Speedy Solution scrap stash. Um, hopefully many of you now have your scraps cut, sorted, organized, and ready to go to be used in beautiful quilts. And so these classes are to show you how to go about doing that. It is really very simple to pull scraps from your stash and create beautiful quilts. So that's the purpose of these mystery quilt classes. If you have not finished getting your scrap stash cut, sorted, and organized, I have a video link below that will take you through that whole process. So check that Speedy Solutions lecture out. That's linked below. This uh, quilt behind me is my mystery quilt class from spring of 2022. It's called Grandma's Favorite Garden Path. And it's a, it was a fun quilt to do. I always like to teach a pieced border in my mystery quilt classes. You don't have to piece a border. You can certainly use plain borders. Again, it's your quilt. But I like to teach that just in case you want to try something new. Uh, this particular pattern also had an applique center. And it was the first time for some of my students to do applique. So they enjoyed that. And uh, that pattern, I will have the PDFs and the blog listed below. It'll be linked below so that you can actually find that too if you'd like to try your hand at this particular quilt. Thank you so much for joining me today for week 30 of my Scrappy Block series, my 52 week series, and also for my week one or uh, part one of my mystery quilt class, Stars in My Eyes. Can't wait to see you next week. Stay tuned and have a great week.